This podcast deals with disturbing subject matter. Listener discretion and headphones are advised. It's time to open the door to your mind, to your mind. Sit back and listen to truth. Careful of what you allow in. Because it's time to go through 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 the fog. Merry Christmas, everyone. This week's story is Dinner for Two. Written by Dark Hero. And narrated by myself and Dodge the Grave. The evening winter air nips at the man's cheeks as he steps out of his car. He takes a deep breath that chills his lungs as he looks at the Christmas lights strewn across his home. The man sets his gaze at a window that leads to his dining room. The lights are on inside and they barely break through the curtains. It's Christmas Eve and not only did he have work late, he was especially late for dinner with his wife. The snow crunches at his feet as he steps towards the front door. The man begins to feel a bit uneasy as he opens the door, but a burst of bright light and soft jazz music drowns his wave of worry. He smells an array of savory aromas that make his stomach rumble. His body shivers as it's wrapped in the heat of his home. He makes his way towards the kitchen, but he's intercepted by his wife, Miranda. She stops him near the entryway and plants her warm lips on his forehead. <laughs> Dalton, dear. Welcome home. Oh. Hey, hon. Miranda links her arm around his and begins to pull him towards the dining room. So, how was work? Oh, just another day at the office. Nothing too crazy. Um, are you okay? She halts them for a moment and looks up at him with a wide smile. <laughs> well, of course, dear. Everything is just... It's perfect. It's Christmas Eve, after all. Dalton returns her smile with his own and begins to let his guard down. In the past few weeks, his moments with her were filled with nothing but arguments. Every relationship is bound to hit a few bumps in the road. Mistakes will be made, but... He was sure that with five years of marriage, they could easily go another five. They're only human, and he loved her, even with all of her imperfections. This way, dear. She pulls him towards the dining room, and Dalton is shocked to see such a wide spread of food on the table. Every inch of the table was filled with side dishes, casseroles, and sauces, enough to feed a whole family. Miranda directs him to a chair and pushes him forward, his ribs pressed against the edge of the table. She steps away and places a rock glass of bourbon in front of him. W wow, hon, you really went all out, huh? Miranda leans in and whispers into his ear. <laughs> Anything for you, dear. Ah, Mom would be shocked to see this. <laughs> huh. well, speaking of which... Have you spoken with her today? Dalton takes another sip and begins to fix his plate when Miranda slaps his hand. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. We're waiting for the main course. I have a roast in the oven. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, regarding Mom, I called her a few times today, but she hasn't picked up. Hmm. Well, that's odd. It's Christmas and she hasn't even called you? Well, she's probably out with some friends or something. Actually, since when have you given a shit about my mom? <laughs> oh, whatever do you mean, dear? Well, you know, the two of you just don't get along. Like cats and dogs, you two. Well, lately, I've come to a realization. Your mother has always called me a worthless bitch. So, I decided to change things. The smell of roasted meat begins to fill the air as Dalton finishes the remnants of the dark spirit in his glass, to which Miranda attentively refills. She steps to the chair on the opposite end of him and takes a seat. Miranda sets an elbow on the table and sets her chin on her hand. 
She gives him another warm smile and sends a wave of trepidation into him. He nervously takes another sip of bourbon. His gulp breaks the awkward silence. What did you change? Um, <laughs> well, I went to go see her the other night to talk about a few things. You wouldn't know since you didn't come home. Um, but I asked her what I could do to make you happy. A brief pause as the soft jazz music continues to play in the background. W well? Oh, you know your mother. She says the damnest things. Um, she went on into her usual spiel about how I couldn't amount to anything and that I could never provide you with the things that would make you happy. Blah, blah, blah. <coughs> you, you know mom doesn't mean any of that. She's just a bit upset. Mm. What? That I couldn't give you a child? That the precious grandbaby she wanted died inside of me, and that makes it my fault? Hun, we talked about this. If you were to take care of yourself a little better, we wouldn't have miscarried. Oh, that's not how that fucking works, dear. <sighs> Look, I'm starving. Can we just eat? The roast isn't ready yet! Fine, fine, fucking fine! <sighs> you see what you made me do? Stop being so irrational. If you were to take a moment to listen to what my mom has to say, maybe you two could get along. There's another brief pause as the soft jazz music continues to play. What else did she say? <clears throat> so, I listened to her go on and on about everything I was doing. I listened and listened and listened and listened until a thought came into mind. Dalton smells the air, and the once pleasant aroma of roasted meat begins to have a hint of smoke to it. Don't worry, dear. The meat's almost ready. Would you like another glass? Dalton looks at his glass and notices something dark and viscous floating within the brown liquid. He tries to push himself away from the table, but his arms feel... actually... He couldn't feel anything at all. He slaps his face with both hands and feels a slight sting. Dalton forces himself to stay composed, but he begins to feel a bit dizzy. Y you bitch! Wh what the fuck did you put in my drink? <laughs> Who's Helen, dear? The name sends an electric shock down his spine. His anger drops, and he looks at his wife, who continues to smile at him. Helen's a friend that he made at the office. Cute, bubbly, intelligent, funny, and young. She was everything that Miranda used to be until a couple of years after they had married. She's just a friend from work. Do you really think I'm that fucking stupid? Miranda sits up from the table and leans forward. Dalton notices how bloodshot her eyes were and realized that her smile was her gritting her teeth in anger. The smell of burning meat begins to fill his nostrils as he looks over to see faint wisps of smoke coming from the direction of the kitchen. He tries to lift himself up, but there wasn't an ounce of strength in his body. You've been fucking that girl ever since the miscarriage. Because you just stopped putting out. A man has needs. Oh, 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 forgive me. Forgive me for having emotions. Forgive me for losing my baby. You know it wasn't us that had the miscarriage. It was me. Dalton manages to lift himself out of his chair for a moment, but immediately crashes into the table, causing a mess. Sit down, dear. The meat, the meat is finally ready. <laughs> Miranda removes herself from the dining room as Dalton struggles to lift his body. The smell of the roast makes his stomach turn. Oh, I'm assuming Helen didn't show up to work today. There's a sudden boom as something hot falls next to his head. 
Miranda grunts as she moves Dalton's limp body back into his seat and he is face to face with a massive slab of charred meat in a roasting pan. She steps to the other side of the table wielding a long two-pronged fork in one hand and a large kitchen knife in the other. She begins to cut into the meat. Dalton looks on helplessly as she continues to saw into the blackened meat. The sound begins to grate on his ears. Mm. <laughs> Your favorite. She manages to cut a large piece of the meat and slams it onto a plate, which she sets in front of him. She takes another few seconds to cut out another serving and sets the plate next to him. Mm. <laughs> Guess what else I made? <laughs> Dalton hears her grunt and moves something in the other room. Here's Miranda speak, and as her voice comes closer, the sound of wooden chair legs scratching on the floor can be heard. You know, your mother was right. I can't be the perfect woman for you. I'll never be enough. So, I made you something that's sure to make you the happiest man in the world. Miranda comes into view, and Dalton looks on in pure terror at what she has presented him. It was something completely alien to him with familiar features. The being sitting in the wooden chair was an amalgamation of different parts. His mom's arms, Helen's legs, his mom's neck, Helen's torso, and the head shape was his mom's, but the face was split in half. A fleshy stitched mass of both their faces. <laughs> Here she is, the perfect woman. She continued to push the chair right next to him and the smell of decay mixed with burnt meat made him vomit. Miranda begins to cut at the serving of meat on his plate and lifts the fork into his mouth. The sharp metal stabs into his tongue and the meat falls into his mouth. He has no power to do anything but look helplessly into his wife's angry eyes. Merry Christmas, dear. 